Welcome to Bahamian Mathematics. Today we will be looking at what probability is all about. We'll understand the term chance and what that looks like with words like likely, impossible, and even chance. We'll even look at the probability scale from 0 to 1. But first let's think about chance. You've heard these things in everyday life. Maybe you've heard the word guess or prediction. Or maybe chance is the possibility or likelihood of something happening. You may even heard about the word risk associated with the word chance. Let's look at the weather. You may have heard about a forecast that says 70% chance of rain or 100% chance of rain, 50% chance of rain. These are percentages associated with chance of rain. This is also part of probability. When we flip a coin, we say there's a chance that you'll land on heads or tails. And that chance sometimes is said as a 50-50 chance. What does that mean? Or if we look at medicine, you've heard it said maybe the risk of developing cancer is about 1 in 8 people. Well, that 1 in 8 is a risk as well. And it's all associated with probability. So let's look at the probability line, which exists between 0 and 1. Probability is only stated between 0 and 1, or we can state it between 0% and 100%. So let's look at the line. Here's 0 on the left and 1 on the right. And a half, obviously, is in the middle. Now 0 is said to be something that is impossible. And 1 is said to be the probability of something that is absolutely certain. But what about those things in the middle between 0 and 1? Well, these are where the other fractions can come into play. So between 0 and a half, we have a quarter. And between half and one, we can see there's five sixths, but there's a whole lot of fractions that exist between zero and one. We can name percentages as well between zero and one. Zero is zero percent. And along the way, we can have percentages like 33 percent, 50 percent, 65 percent, and so on, straight up to 100 percent. If something is certain to happen, it is 100 percent sure it will happen. In the middle, the half, we can say there's an even chance of things happening. And if something is unlikely, it's located over here, between zero and a quarter. And we can say, for example, a one in six chance is said to be unlikely to happen. And over here, things are likely to happen because they get closer to one or 100%. And if we had something like a four in five chance, then we know that's likely to happen. We know four out of five is 80%, which is close to 100. And so let's look now at the definition of probability. Officially, probability is a measure of the likelihood of an event to happen. Now, many events cannot be predicted with total certainty, but this is why we say it is the likelihood of something to happen. We can only predict the chance of something happening. And again, a probability of zero means the event is impossible. It will never happen. And here's zero. And the probability of 1 means an event is certain to happen. And here is 1. And of course, all along the way, probability can range from 0 to 1. We can see the half in the middle and all of the other fractions in between. So let's consider these scenarios. What is the probability that a boy will grow to a height of 15 feet tall? Think about that for a second. 15 feet tall. Where would that fall on the probability scale between 0 and 1? Well, let's look at this. This person is named Oliver from Canada, standing at 7 feet 5.33 inches tall. He's earned his place in the brand new Guinness Book World of Records in 2022, confirmed as being the tallest boy in the world. Now, he's 7 foot 5.33 inches tall, and he's the tallest boy in the world. What do you think the probability would be that a boy will grow to a height of 15 feet? That would be almost double his height. Well, we can say with certainty, or almost sure, that this is going to be impossible. If right now, the world's tallest boy is 7 feet 5.33 inches, it is almost impossible that a boy will get to be 15 feet tall. And so we can say that that probability is almost close to zero, if not zero. Let's look at another scenario. What is the probability that the sun will rise tomorrow? Where would you put that along the probability line between 0 and 1? 0 being impossible, 1 being certain. Well, the sun has risen every day for the last 5,000 years, or 1,826,213 days. 
So the probability that it will rise tomorrow, which is 1,826,214, divided by 1,826,215, that's 99.9%. .9%. That's pretty certain to happen. So we say that's almost certain to happen. The sun will rise tomorrow. And lastly, what is the probability that you will roll a 5 on a fair die? Now here's a die. Die is the singular of dice. One die, two dice. And because there are six faces on a die, and the number 5 only appears once, you only have a 1 in 6 chance of rolling the number 5. So it's unlikely, and here's one 6 on the number line. We say that's unlikely. It's not impossible. But it's only a 1 in 6 chance that that will happen. And so here's where that probability falls on the number line. Now let's learn how to write probability. We can write probability, as you can see in the other slides, as a percentage, 50%, 84%. We can write it as a number between 0 and 1, 0 0.3, 0 0.56. We can write it as a fraction, 1 over 6, 4 over 9, and so on. And we can write it in words. 1 in 5 chance, 2 in 6 chance, and so on. But how do we calculate probability? That's what we're going to look at now. The probability formula is the possibility that an event will happen. And that is equal to the ratio. And the ratio, we know, is a fraction like A over B. That's what a ratio is, where we compare two values. So the probability that something will happen is the ratio of the number of favorable outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes. So we're going to create a fraction. The probability of an event is equal to the number of favorable outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes. And we'll use this formula now going ahead. Let's look at this. What is the probability that you will roll a 3 on a fair die? And let's use the formula we just learned. The probability of any event happening is the number of favorable outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes. Well, if we use this, P with 3 in brackets, we mean the probability of getting a 3 is equal to how many faces have the number 3? Well, we know there's only one face with the number 3, and so a 1 goes right here. Divided by how many total faces are there? We know there are 6 on a die. And so we now have a fraction of 1 over 6. We can convert that into a decimal, 0 0.1666, recurring. Or we can change it into a percentage, 16.66%. Or we can say it in words, a 1 in 6 chance. This is how we write the probability of an event. Let's look at what the probability is. You will roll an even number on a fair die. So again, we write the formula. The probability is equal to the number of favorable outcomes over the total number of outcomes. And if we write it like this, P, and in brackets, even, we say, how many faces have an even number? Well, let's look on the side. Here's the number 2 that's even. Here's the number 4 that's even. The number 6 is even. So we have three numbers that are even on a die. 1, 2, 3. And so the top number in the fraction is 3. Divided by, we know the total number of faces is 6. And so a fraction is 3 over 6. If we change that into a decimal, we get 0 0.5. And as a percentage, it's 50%. We can write it in words as a 3 in 6 chance. And that gives us our probability for this event. Let's try, what is the probability that you land on tails when you flip a coin? You saw this in the, in the slide before. The probability of an event is the number of favorable outcomes over the total number of outcomes. Favorable meaning, in this case, tails. How many tails are there on the coin? Well, we know we have either heads or tails. There's only one that we call tails, and so the number one goes here. How many total sides are there on a coin? One, two. There's two, and so our probability of getting tails is one half. As a decimal, it's 0 0.5. As a percentage, it's 50%. And in words, it's one in two chance. Now let's look at a spinner. What is the probability that you will land on a red space on the spinner below? Again, here is our formula for writing the probability of an event. And we have to ask ourselves, how many red spaces are there? And we can count them. One, two, three. That becomes our numerator. 
And our denominator is the total number of spaces. Let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There are 10 spaces. So the denominator becomes 10. And the probability of this event is 3 over 10. As a decimal, it's 0 0.3. As a percentage, it's 30%. And in words, you have a 3 in 10 chance of getting red if you spin this spinner. What about this jar of marbles? What's the probability that you will choose a green marble from the jar if you weren't looking? Again, here's the probability formula. And the probability of green means how many green marbles are in the jar. Now to help you, I've counted them. And here are the blue, red, and green marbles. There are 12 blue, 14 red, and 10 green. And so how many green marbles are there? There are 10. Now the total number of marbles, we have to add up the blue, the red, and the green. So we say 12 plus 14 plus 10, that gives us a total of 36. So the probability of getting green is 10 over 36. As a decimal, it's 0 0.2777. And as a percentage, it's 27.7%. And in words, we can say there is a 10 in 36 chance that you will select a green marble. And now let's look at a deck of cards. What is the probability that you will choose a king from a deck of cards? Here is the formula for the probability of an event. The probability of choosing a king is equal to how many kings are there in a deck? If you're not familiar with cards, there's the king of hearts, the king of diamonds, the king of spades, and the king of clubs. That makes four as the denominator. And how many total cards are there? Well, if you're not familiar, there are 13 cards in each suit that range from 2 straight up until 10. And then we have Jack, Queen, King, and Ace. That makes 13 in each suit. 13 times 4 is 52, and so we have a total of 52 cards in the deck. The probability of getting a King is 4 out of 52, or 0 0.076. As a percentage, is 7.6%. That's not very high. Or a 4 in 52 chance of getting a King. And if you want to see more videos just like this one, make sure to subscribe, like, and share to Bahamian Mathematics YouTube channel. And now it's time for our quiz. What is the probability that you will land on heads when you flip a coin? You have five seconds. Time's up. The answer is one half, one out of two, or 50%. We know we can only get heads or tails, and there's only one head out of two possibilities. Question two, what is the probability that you will roll a number greater than four on a fair die? Time's up. The answer is two out of six, or 33.3%. Let's look at the numbers on a die, one to six. If you roll a number greater than 4, that means you haven't rolled a 1, 2, 3, or 4. It must have been a 5 or a 6, and there are two of them out of 6, which gives you your answer. Number 3. What is the probability that you will land on a blue space on the spinner below? Time's up. You can see that there are two blue spaces out of a total of 10. So the answer is 2 out of 10, which is 20%. Here's 1, 2 blue spaces out of 10 spaces in total. Number 4, what is the probability that you will choose a pink marble from the jar below? Time's up. The answer is 3 out of 5, or 60%. Let's count the pink marbles. 1, 2, 3. There are 3 pink marbles. And in total, there are four, five in total. Three out of five gives us 60%. Final question. What is the probability that you will choose a club from a deck of cards? Time's up. We said in a previous slide that each suit goes from two straight up to the king and an ace, which make 13 in each suit. In this case, there are 13 clubs. And now you've solved the mystery of probability. Well done.